Hello everybody. So today we're going to show off a fun do-it-yourself project I did. Um, I like to go camping every year over at Reggae on the River and wanted to have some backup power and also this is my emergency power backup for my business. I had three power failures at the beginning of summer and that really put in my mind that uh, I need to be able to print labels with no power and do it all day long. So got some batteries together and I made the solar panel project. So what you're looking at is a Renogy 50 watt solar panel kit. So I was very lucky. Um, this project was coming together before camping and all of a sudden in the dumpster at my work shows up a about a quarter of a piece of four by eight, you know, so it was a quarter sheet of furniture grade teak plywood, three quarters inch. So I was like, oh man, this is meant to be. So I threw together this project. I cut a small piece and mounted the solar panel here. Let me show some features of it. So what happens here is uh, these get connected to the uh, battery um, that you're going to be using as your emergency power supply. So what I did here to keep it simple was I wrapped a black tape right here on the negative. So I wrapped a bunch of black tape here so that lets me know this is the negative lead that gets connected to the battery. And I really honestly just use uh, some binder clips to connect that to the battery leads. And you can just get any combination of sealed lead acid batteries. Um, if you don't mind doing maintenance and you need to keep them upright, you can use uh, standard car batteries, um, deep cycle batteries. Anyway, there's a whole wealth of research you can do on batteries to use for this. So I also put a nice little handle on each side. So, you know, it's not the lightest thing in the world but um, it works just fine. And I use this to go camping for several days, and I've done some testing on my deck to make sure that I can charge a battery. So you might be wondering, what are all the holes? That's just simply to lighten it. I uh, used a salvaged wood here, and that salvaged wood was a three-quarter inch piece of plywood. And I don't know if anybody's ever picked up a three-quarter inch piece of plywood. It's heavy, even a small piece like that. And then you mount a solar panel on it. And, uh, you know, I wanted it to be fairly light. So we're going to call this build one. We were just doing some testing here to see how it was going to work and um, you know get the components put on and see. So what I did was you started with a blank piece of plywood and I had all of these little components here that I knew were going to have to go on the plywood. So I literally just laid the pieces out on the plywood. This was with no holes on it. This was a several step process. This was be an intermediate level at least, a do-it-yourself project. Um, so before all the holes were in the plywood, I laid all my parts out. And you can still probably see some of the scribe marks if you were to look close enough. And I just scribed out, literally with a pencil, where I thought things would need to go. You know, the most important parts were the solar controller and the fuse. So. Um, once I got that laid out, took it off, and then began installing components and figuring out how it was going to work. It was a multi-step process. You know, it's a lot of putting things on and taking them back off. Um, and then I also needed switches. Um, you know, you need to be able to connect the battery to the controller and give the controller power before you bring on the solar panel. It's very important. Um, so what you need to do is you need to be able to isolate each. And uh, ideally I would have used 12 volt switches, but um, you know, I was in a hurry. I was running off for camping and I was also worried power was going out in my house so much that I needed to have an emergency kit to keep my business running. Um, so I went to, you know, I talked it over with a friend of mine who's a very skilled auto mechanic and he didn't see any reason why I couldn't use just 110 switches. You know, these are 15 amp switches here. And um, so, the, you know, they're, they have plenty of current ca uh, capability. Eventually, the contactors, you know, even actually it was an electrician. I ran it by two people. Um, there was an electrician at our building, and I ran it by him, and he said the biggest thing you have to worry about is the, uh, the currents that you're running, the amperage. And I'm running very small amperage. I was going to run very small appliances. Pulling like 100 watts is what I needed to pull, you know, 100 to 300 watts, not a lot of current. Um, 
So for switches, I just use light switches. And I didn't want to have any problems with uh, things arcing. And so I did a somewhat diligent job. I bought the backing boxes if you were going to uh, mount these into a wall. Um, and then, you know, everywhere I looked online, it said you should probably have a fuse in there. Um, so, you know, I did a fuse from the solar panel to the controller. So if something happens with a solar panel, there's a short, it's not going to blow out my controller. And then, um, you know, additionally, there's a fuse right here. That's in the, um, the battery tray cable right here. So ideally you want to fuse up as many connections as possible uh, between everything. You know, you would ideally have a fuse between the battery and the controller and a fuse between the solar panel and the controller. And, you know, um, if you have an inverter, it would be really good if you have a fuse in the inverter. So if anything goes in and you, you know, you fray a wire and you have a short, you're not going to fry everything. So this panel is available on Amazon. Um, I believe it was around 120, 130 bucks for the solar panel kit, which came with solar panel and the controller and the mounting brackets for the uh, mounting brackets for the solar panel. Um, and then additionally, I bought the uh, battery kit, just the battery wire kit. Uh, two light switches, two 110 volt 15 amp light switches. Uh, these are, I don't know the proper building term for it, these are basically the boxes that are behind the wall in the sheetrock that you mount your light switches at the at the house. This is all going to be available in any decent hardware store. And then uh, lastly, um, I got a fuse, um, I think it's also a Renogy fuse. I'll have to look at the, I'll link up everything on the video so you can uh, see what the parts are. Um, a fuse here, so that was an additional purchase. Um, on the controller, there's the ability to do 12 volts out directly. And so I um, went to a local electronics store and got a 12 volt socket and put that there. Although ideally, I would say the best way to do this is to have your battery connected to this. And then off of the battery, I would say you put your inverter and your 12 volt loads directly off of the battery. Um, you know, pulling through the controller, that sure seems like a great way to fry your controller. Um, so it's much easier to just go directly off the battery. The battery can handle the current, the controller can't necessarily. Um, this is a very inexpensive controller. It doesn't need to be fancy, it's 50, 50 watts. So um, there you see, and then um, I just use screws. <laughs> um, real simple. Um, I use some through bolts here to mount these, uh, these are gate gate handles, you know, like a Home Depot type place would have something like that. Um, and then I used a, a hole saw that I had available. You know, I mounted everything, got it all where I thought everything would work, took it back off. I knew where everything was going to be because I had it marked out. And then I drilled holes wherever I could. So, you know, build two, I would do a lot more elegant. You know, I still have some of that plywood left. And I would probably do a very minimalist design here. This, uh, these Renogy panels are really nice. And as long as you don't need it to uh, withstand a lot of flexure, I don't see why you couldn't. Instead of having a big board like this, you, know, you see your mounting points right here. I think if you were really clever, you could figure out some sort of a way to just do two strips of wood, put your handles over on this side, and you could lighten several pounds off of what I've done. Ideally, you know, additionally, you could use different materials. Um, you know, if you're handy with metal, aluminum obviously would make a great, you know, a couple of aluminum rails, yeah, and you'd figure out how to do this. So you can make this as simple or as complicated as you like. So, you know, you can buy a professionally made, I think they make a briefcase solar kit. I think it's over $300. And, you know, for under $300, I also had the batteries and inverters. I'm only using 50 watts, but, I, you know, my power needs were not very high. Um, 
for emergency power for the business, I need to be able to charge a laptop. I need to be able to power a cable modem and a router and a printer. And even the laptop can run off battery for a little while. So uh, the pull is not going to be very strong. You need to scale this up based on what your needs are, including you know building a deck with several of these. <laughs> um, so this is easy, portable. I took this with me to Reggae on the River. I had a great time. I had uh, power to keep the business in touch, and I also had power for uh, some things that made Reggae on the River a lot more enjoyable. So um, here's just a quick show. I won't actually get into how it was made. You can kind of get an idea, and I think the DIYers out there will look at this and say, oh, yeah, of course, I can make this, and you'll make your own version of it. Um, when I do build two on this and make it a little more elegant, um, and some of this was made uh, the way it is for a reason. I left all the cables as long as they came, just about, um, because if I ever want to unmount this and mount and use that solar panel a different configuration, I don't want to have to rebuy all the cabling. Uh, it's a little bit expensive. So figured coil it up, zip tie it on, and literally most of this that's not screwed on, the only two things that are screwed on are the controller, the handles, and the fuse. Everything else is zip tied. Those holes that I used for lightning made really handy zip tie points. So all of this, you see it's pretty pretty good uh, and certainly good enough for camping. And then what I do when I bring this to camping, I had a little plastic sheet. I shied a, a slid a plastic sheet over it and then put a blanket over that. and that was plenty to uh, protect it and keep the panel uh, from getting scratched up. Worked beautifully. Um, I'm going to show in another video how I actually use this. I'll demonstrate it. Um, I just wanted to kind of get this out there because I know a lot of people are going to have extended power problems and maybe we're not going to help out the people who are having it right now, but you know, this happens every year in different places and so maybe you build something like this. So you lose power for a couple of weeks and at least you have you know, if you had internet at your house, you could get your cable modem back up and running and let your family know that you're okay. Uh, you could charge your cell phones, charge your computers, um, and run some basic lighting off of this system. Uh, you could run it up as much as you wanted. Um, the basic rule of thumb I've heard is, you know, you should have the number of watts of the panel equal to the amp hours of the battery. So when you go to buy 12 volt batteries, let's say a 12 volt sealed lead acid, I think I got two 18 amp hour batteries. So that's 36 amp hours. This is a 50 watt panel, so on a decent day in decent sunlight, my 50 watt panel will have no trouble refilling 36 amp hours of battery. Um, so that's kind of how it works, and you can scale this up from here. <laughs> if you were willing to deal with the weight, uh, it would be a little bit heavier, you could have a 100 watt panel and you could have 100 amp hours of battery, but now you're starting to get into some serious weight unless you're gonna be buying lithium ion batteries, which is gonna be very expensive. Um, this system could also be used in conjunction with a generator. Uh, you know, you have a nice sunny day, you just put out your solar panel, you charge the battery. Uh, if that's not working for you, you could disconnect this from the battery. I think you could probably even, as long as the switches were off, leave it connected, but just for safety purposes, not to blow out all the components, you just connect this and connect your generator on the days that are cloudy, um, or you're using more power than you can produce from the sun. Anyway, I just want to throw this out the video, I'll try to get it edited up and quickly out there so that anybody who is in the extreme weather area or dealing with earthquake problems, um, you could build something like this and have some basic light and basic power. See you later everybody, have a good sun.